Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for Community College of Denver. And this is our video lecture over Section 12.2. So we're going to continue with the descriptive statistics side of things, where we're going to organize data and, and uh, summarize data. We're going to assume that we're working with uh, quantitative data, so we're collecting numbers. And uh, we have a data set of numbers, and we want to figure out the measures of central tendency. Really, like, what's the middle of this data, or what's the average of this data? So that's what this section is about. We're going to do the first three objectives. We're going to determine the mean, sometimes known as the average, the median, sometimes known as the middle, and the mode of the data, sometimes known as the most frequent. So the mean, uh, the mean of a data set is the sum of the data items divided by the number of items. Some, a lot of people know this as the average, okay? but in this class and in this section we'll call it the mean. So when we add up all the data values, this notation right here means take the sum of all the data values, we list each data value as x, and divide by the number of data values, so the lowercase n represents the number of data values, and this x represents each data value, this sigma is the sum. So add up all the data values, divide by the number of data values. So here's a table showing the 10 highest earning TV actors and the 10 highest earning TV actresses for the 2010-11 season. Find the mean earnings in million dollars for the 10 highest earning actors. So I guess we're doing the actor males. So if you add up all these numbers and divide by, let's see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, yeah, it was 10, of course. So add them up. 40 plus 20 plus 15, these are their salaries, earnings, excuse me. And divide by 10, it'd be $14.7 million. Um, I guess we didn't do it for the actresses, but um, so okay, so let's continue. The median, next measure of central tendency, is the data item in the middle of each data set. So median, middle, sometimes we have, a, you know, we think of the median for the road. That's the part in the middle, the grassy part in the middle, or like a curve or something. So in the middle of the road. So median, middle, it's the data item in the middle of each data set when the data set is ranked or ordered. So to find the median, there's two steps. You arrange the data in order from smallest to largest, or three steps, excuse me. You, but the main thing is you got to arrange the data in order, and if the number of data items is odd, then the median is the data item in the middle, and if the number of data items is even, then the median is the mean of the two middle data items. So let's just look at an example. So here is a data set of, say, scores on a test that are in order to find the middle. One way of doing it is I kind of cross off the end. So I cross off 84, then I, oh, this isn't even in order yet. So first, oh gosh, we have to arrange it in order. So the 84, the 88, the 90, the 95, and the 98. And the way I approach this, if I have a little bit bigger data set, is I cross off the 84. Sorry about that, let me pause this. Sorry about that, somebody's doing yard work. Okay, all right, so get them in order. So 84, 88, 90, 95, 98. Then I cross off till I get to the middle. So I cross off the ends, 84, 98, 88, 95, and then I arrive at the middle. The median is 90. So that's for an odd number of data set, odd number of data values. You'll always end up as a data value right in the middle. But if we have an even data set like this, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 data values. So that's even. If we arrange them in order from smallest to largest, so that's kind of the hardest work of this whole process. So 7, 13, 15, 25, 28, 34, 47, 59, 68, 74. Now they're in order. If I cross off the ends until I get to the middle, I'll end up with 28 and 34 in the middle. So the median they're trying to show with this bar is actually the middle between those two numbers. Well, how do you find the middle of two numbers? You add them up and divide by two. It's just the average of those two numbers. So if we add up 28 and 34 and divide by two, we get 31. So 31 is the median, and that's not a data value. So that'll happen sometimes when we have an even data set. Okay, another way to do the median if you have a large number of data values is to just look at the position that it would be in. So let's, let's take a look at this. It says, listed below are the number of letters in the nine longest words of the English language. Find the median number of letters for the nine longest words. The data items are arranged from smallest to largest. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values. So sometimes, um, excuse me. So sometimes the median, um, 
you can use this formula to figure out the position that it's in. So this is the first position, second position, third position, fourth position. So the median is always the n plus 1 divided by 2 position. So n representing the number of data values. There are 9 data values. So n is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is the fifth position. So that means if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the median is the tw uh, right there, the number 28. And i got a puppy running across my computer right now, sorry. So 28. 28 is the median. So this really helps if we have like 100 values or something like that. And let's say we had 100 values and n was 100. 100 plus 1 divided by 2. So remember 100 is even. So 101 divided by 2 is the is 50.5 so that means that the median would be between the 50 50th position and the 51st position or the average of those two numbers so here's one where it says find the median stress level rating it says there's 151 data items in the, the table so n equals 151 so instead of listing these all out and crossing off the ends we could just use that formula so the median is the value in the 151 plus 1 divided by 2. So 152 divided by 2 is 76 position. So we could count down till we get to the 76 position. So 2, 3, if I'm adding these up, 2, 3, 6, 18, so forth, 34, and I go down the line until I get to the 76 position. Doing it this way. We get to the 76 data item is 7. Okay. So this will this will happen if you have a really large data set. Most of the time I'm going to be asking you to find medians of smaller data sets. So I would really recommend if the data set is small to list it out in order and then just cross off the ends until you arrive at the middle. Um, but you might have a problem in your homework where there's a data set with a really long, really long list of numbers. So it might be helpful to use the n plus 1 divided by 2 position formula. Mainly, though, the median is the middle. So comparing the median and the mean, it says five employees in a manufacturing plant earn salaries of 19700 etc., these salaries. The section manager has an annual salary of 95000 So let's see here. It says find the median annual salary for the six people. Well, if we list these in order, there they are in order, it looks like the, we have six numbers. So the median will be the average of the 21,500 and the 22,600, which turns out to be 22,050, which is pretty representative of what these people are making in the plant as a middle. And or, you know, we're, we're coming up with measures of central tendency, which says what's, what's really the average or the middle. <coughs> so that's the median, 22,500. But if we look at the mean, we add all these numbers up, and notice when you add that 95,000, 95,000 is about the sum of these, it's a little bit less than the sum of these five numbers combined. So it really almost doubles the sum just from one number, and we're dividing by just by six. So when you take that, you get an average of 33,700. Now let's take a look back at these salaries. Is the average salary of people working at this really 33,700? Well, 33,700 is more than these five employees in the plant. Why is it more? Because we have that one manager making 95,000. This is this happens a lot when we have what's called data that ha, data a data value, excuse me, that we call an extreme value or skewed data. And what that does is it skews the mean, and we can see that the mean is not that great of a as a as a measure of center for this data set. So when we have extreme values, some, uh, a lot of times the median is a better representation of the center. There are a lot of examples in real world where we have extreme values like home values and things like that, where people live in very expensive mansions. There's not very many of them, but they, they're very expensive. So when you move to a neighborhood or, or, or looking to work for a particular company or looking at the average salaries of a particular city, make sure to look at the mean and the median. Because if the mean is significantly higher like this, it has a lot to do with, say, one extreme or a few extreme values that aren't representative of the most, most of the group. Lastly, we talk about the mode. The mode is the least popular measure of center, but it's the data value that occurs the most often in a data set. If more than one data value has the highest frequency, 
than each of these data values of the mode. So you can have a tie for the mode. If no data items are repeated, then the data set has no mode. So for instance, this data set, 7 repeats, uh, so and 7 is the only one that repeats, so the mode is 7. However, let me go back to that slide. If we had, let's say we had a 10 as well, a second 10. So two 7s and two 10s. Then the mode would be 7 and 10. And if none of these value, values repeated, so this second 7 wasn't there, then there would be no mode. So mode's kind of weird like that, but mainly we're going to be focusing on the mean and the median. You've got to be able to find both of them and then understand really one of the big lessons is that the mean is what we call sensitive to extreme values. And sometimes when we have extreme values, like in this example, the mean is not an accurate measure of center and the median's better. So that's it. We'll see you next time. Good luck.